Hi, I'm Mike, and welcome to my channel where I like to talk about games and game design. And today, I wanted to take a step back from talking about shaders in Godot specifically to refocus on the basics and take a look at Godot's default spatial material and just all of the cool things that you can do with that without having to rely on custom shaders. Now, I know all of this information is available uh, on the documentation, but if you're like me, you do better with experimenting things on your own or having things shown in a visual way as opposed to reading it uh, in text form. So that's what this video is going to be. Um, I'm hoping to be able to provide you with a solid framework, a foundation to the basics of using the spatial material, which should hopefully allow you to then be more comfortable in experimenting with a lot of the different options. So on that note, I have included a link to the documentation down in the description below. So if you would prefer to read it, please feel free to go take a look at it. So the plan for the rest of the video is I'm going to do the, the default, uh, make some spheres of a particular material uh, kind of examples. I'll use these to kind of show you some different examples of things that you can do with just the default spatial material itself. Uh, let's hop into it. So welcome to Godot. Uh, and you can see our scene here, we have five spheres, four of which we will use to represent different types of materials. We'll start with making a shiny metallic sphere. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new spatial material to the sphere, and then we're going to go straight to the albedo and change the color to what I want the color of the underlying metal to be, so a grayish color. After that, we'll go to the handily titled metallic section. We'll turn the metallic very far up. This is basically uh, handling the reflection, but you can see here it appears that nothing has happened and the reason for this There's another option the roughness setting by default is set all the way to one Which means it's a completely rough surface So you won't actually be able to see any of the reflection properly So if we go to the roughness setting and turn that down You can see that we now have a shiny metal looking orb uh, Let's move on to a glass orb so again, let's give it a new spatial material. First thing I'll do again is change the albedo. We'll give it a, a light blue color. We'll also drop the alpha value down so that it will be transparent. You can see at the moment it hasn't done anything. And that's because we need to go back up into the flags section and toggle the transparency option. And there we have it looking see-through. But it doesn't really look like glass yet. Well, usually glass is a smooth surface, so we'll turn down the roughness. And when something is smooth, it very often has a little bit of reflection as well. So let's turn up the metallic. So it looks almost like a glass sphere at this point. It's, it's shiny, it's reflective, but there's something that happens with glass, especially in spherical objects, uh, is that it, it becomes a lens and it refracts the things that are behind it. So in Godot, in the shader material, there's actually an option for this. So if we scroll down to the bottom or close to the bottom, there's the refraction section. If we turn on the refraction, adjust the slider until we get it to a magnification that we like. In this case, I'm going to have it just slightly above one. And there we go. We have a relatively convincing glass sphere. Now for the third one, this one's going to be a little bit weird, but what if you have an object that has a little bit of fuzz around it. Well, what happens with the fuzz is that it will reflect some of the light as it travels around. So it'll kind of give it a, uh, a little bit of a glow effect on the edges. So again, new spatial material, we'll set it to be brown. We'll imagine this is like a teddy bear of sorts. Uh, and the first thing that we're going to want to do here is to simulate that light kind of bouncing around, wrapping around the object, is to use the rim option. So if we go down to the, the rim section, turn that on, we can see that it's a little strong, tone it down a bit, change the colors until it looks right, and there we go. We have an object that is kind of fuzzy. Um, you can definitely increase and help this effect with an actual fur texture, but this is how you would go to kind of tweak and perfect that effect. Also, just as a note, uh, if realism is what you're going for, you often want to be pretty subtle with these effects, um, otherwise they can look a little bit jarring. And then finally, uh, let's try to make a ball that is kind of a, a frosted glass, something that is translucent, not perfectly transparent. So uh, again, we'll new spatial material. Uh, this time I'll make it red instead of blue just to differentiate the two. And again, turn down the alpha value so you can see through it. We'll turn on the transparency flag and then again, go down and turn on the refraction. We'll adjust it so that there's no magnification. You can change this 
uh, as you wish, but we'll go now to the roughness slider and move it uh, until we get the opacity that we want. One thing to note, because both this glass sphere and the other glass sphere are transparent, they get drawn separately from the solid objects, and because of that, when we look through one of the glass spheres at the other one, you can't see it. Uh, and that's just the, the rendering order uh, in Godot. Unfortunately, I don't know how to get around this at the moment. So if this is an issue for you, or if you have a solution to this, please leave it in the comments below. Um, I'd be very curious to know uh, any workarounds for this. Uh, and I'm sure there's others who are watching who would appreciate it as well. And there we have it. There's the four spheres. I'll leave the last one in the middle so you can just see the default material and how that reacts to the light. And we'll move it over into a different uh, world scene so you can see how these look. So you may notice here that the the metal sphere doesn't look right. Um, and I, I was trying to figure out why this was. Uh, but it turns out that the metallic property just reflects the skybox or the, the sky that Godot knows about, which I think it's not something I ever really stopped to think about before, but it makes perfect sense. Uh, and I hope you found this little tangent interesting as I did. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you've gotten a solid foundation for the spatial material that you can now experiment off of and see a lot of the other options in effect. Um, if you've made it this far in the video, it would be a great help if you could leave a like uh, and a comment below. Uh, and if you are interested in learning more about visual effects and stuff in Godot, uh, I have other videos about shaders in particular on my channel. And if you're interested in hearing more from me, uh, hit the subscribe button. Um, I've also set up a coffee page, so if you have an extra dollar or two um, and you'd like to buy me a coffee, that would be greatly appreciated. And uh, that's it for me for now, so uh, until next time, uh, take care of yourselves. <laughs>